guys, it's Division RC back at it again. Today I have my Force RC F18 64 millimeters. I've had this ever since the end of September. Actually, I got it for Christmas. Um, I have only flown it once, and as you guys saw in my video, it was not a good ed edit. I was forcing, I was rushing to edit it. Um, it flew after a couple complications. Um, but today is going to be my review about it because I did get a flight in. I did get two batteries in because I'm running two 4S, but we'll get into that later. So this is a 64 millimeter jet with um, 64 millimeter EDF in there, um, 11 bladed. I was pretty surpri um, surprised because I was um, I've been searching up, and most stock planes come with five blades, but this actually came with. 11 and usually upgrades are um, usually when you upgrade a blade on a fan it's 12 but this actually came stock as 11 so I was actually pretty good surprised um, so when I first built it I did have complications with the front wheel well complications that I only realized at the airfield when I first flew it I did it install it backwards you guys see this um, spring as you guys land spring is facing backwards I did have it facing forward so it was really not and it wasn't really tightened well so I could barely steer and taxi when on the runway now this this does have four nine gram plastic gear servos two in the back one for each elevator side but it works simultaneously they work simultaneously here's one here's two it was super easy installing this push rod in clevis. As you guys see right there, there's like a little, um, sorry if it might be too dark. There's a little piece of rubber so it doesn't open because all you have to do is put it over, pop it in. For me, I had to um, twist it back for um, so the elevator surface would be even with the rest of it. So um, I had to do that for each side. As you guys see right here, there's some damage right here. This is from my fire. I had in my room. Really, it only made the um, foam bubble up, but this was this did go in into the insurance. So, as you guys are seeing, probably it is tail heavy without any battery or wings. So now talking about batteries, I did buy two um, two um, two hundred two thousand two hundred four S batteries. Mah um. MH um, 35C right here with a EC3 connector and a really nice charging lead. I, I, I'm happy about this. It has this instead of just the white plug right there. I, I like this right here and it even has it glued on um, because my charger, when I put this in, it was really hard to get out other than um, on like three S's. But I have two of these. Now, I, I was just expecting these other, other second. And I don't know if you guys can see though, in the fire it looks like a piece of metal from the battery that blew up, kind of like went into this. But I think it's only in the cover, because otherwise, if it punctured into it, this would have caught fire too. But and I also plugged into this and it worked fine. But that does scare me a little bit. So I don't know if you guys can see it right there. Let me try it. Yeah, you could kind of see it right there. It shows a little bit metal. Let's hope the camera focuses. I can't get it, but. It's super tiny. Doesn't really look like a shung anything. But yeah, I got two of these. Two for us. 2200 mAh batteries. Work perfectly with this and also with the CG. Um, they aren't strapped down or anything. They just snugly fit in there and didn't have a problem. Though I would be more careful and add it if I were you. Now, talk, let's talk about the wings. Wings are removable. The horizon or vertical stabilizers are not they were glued in. So these are the wing pieces each right here. As you guys see, there's these little missiles. This was the side on where um, one of my failed takeoffs where it scratched and then it flipped. This thing broke off. As you guys see, there's like black marks all right there. That um, little fin was rubbed down. That one just came off and this little area right here was rubbed down. I just glued it back on. And then it did come back off again during the fire when my dad bumped it, but it was easily glued back on again. I can't really tell much. Um, 
you won't be able to tell it um tell the damage in the air but i mean it was this is my first jet it was my fault that that happened same thing with the other side it's just the same thing this one actually looks nicer you did have so Alex, um you didn't have to install the push rod and clevis it was already installed right there and the uh, centering was perfect oh uh, well it might be a little off you guys could tell it's, it is a tiny bit off as you guys could tell right there so let's put these down i mean this is um all eppo foam forgot to mention now actually let's keep one of these this is the carbon rod spar easily fits in with this hole right here so easily fits goes all the way in um it goes all the way in like this but it is kind of hard for the first couple of times when you put it into here and actually fit the um wings on it is pretty hard the wings are mounted with two screws each i don't know what size they are they have like a hex little thing on the top and they do go on to here each of the wings over here and then they you slide the wings on and they screw into these little paces right or a little um these things right here though i did have a big problem with the wings not exactly um lining up with the rock because of the carbon rod was acting weird not lining up or like not fully going in so like the screw was like a couple millimeters out of its place but i just unscrewing it screwed back in and i was just messing around and then they they finally got all the way flat in so for the assembly it was pretty easy all you had to do was for the wings all you had to do was as like i said assembled um this what's it called um missile there was also more drop tanks and missiles but i decided not to do it which i was glad because it would have gotten damaged on my first takeoff so this was it you didn't have to install anything at the servo the push rod on the, the wings were fine even the stickers i'm really glad with these stickers but um and that's it for the wings you didn't have to do anything else for the fuselage you did have had to install the landing gear the landing gear right here is just by, held on by a little plate with two screws you put the landing gear and put the plate screwed in it was kind of hard since the landing gear was just wobbling out it's just a flat surface underneath there but as you guys can see both for each they're facing this way this all you had to do is place it in and then use this tiny super little tiny screw right there you make sure you have the orientation right that this little spring faces back um you also had to install the nose cone which i installed kind of crooked and i realized that after maybe half an hour of installing it and i was like really mad but then i then i went to adjust it and actually with the glue i'm using foam safe glue which is Hobby Hut Foam Cure Crystal Clear Foam Safe Glue, EPP Foam Safe Glue. This is from Pennsylvania. Uh, I went there and just grabbed this from a hobby store, put it there, and I was, it was actually still kind of movable, so I moved it around to where it was centered and it was perfect. I'm pretty surprised this, this nose cone did not crim crinkle up on the first takeoff landings. I'll quickly show that you got to you guys at the end of the video. But, I mean, I was pretty surprised, so... The build is really easy. You didn't have to do anything else other than the nose cone, the wheels, the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. These, all you had to do was add a whole bunch of glue to, or not a whole bunch, but add um, foam safe glue to the inside of it, and then foam safe glue to the elevator part. Put it in, take it out, hold it out for 90 seconds, and then put it in. Make sure you had it lined up. Make sure to have the wings on. Make sure it lines up with the wings. And hold it there for maybe a couple minutes, but then, and then you do that for the same side. After that, you would um, install the vertical stabilizer the exact same way, except right here. You can't really have these crooked, but you had to make sure that you had enough foam or foam safe glue in there and make sure you had it all the way compacted down there. And then you, this thing has no rudder, but all you had to do was add this, like I said earlier, push rod and clevis and this rubber thing and that's it did i did like i said again earlier had to mechanically adjust this but that's it so inside the canopy 
This um, has a magnet. It's kind of hard sometimes. I don't want to break that because that's kind of fragile. Not really fragile, but I've seen on other models of F-18s this come in the box broken. It is, at first to me, it was a super tight space to fit a battery in and a receiver. So I have a four channel receiver in there. You know what? Let me actually move the camera so you guys can see. Cut. All right guys, here's the canopy room or the area for the battery. You guys see in there, I have my four channel receiver and there's all the wire leads that go all the way to the back. Now these wire leads were um, pretty long. It came out probably up to here and they're also labeled with aileron, elevator, and throttle. It's pretty nice. Now right here we do have a nine gram spectrum. I forgot to mention, they're all spectrum um, servos. Nine gram spectrum servo for the front nose gear. It's um, movable, steerable, but, and it moves. This thing moves all the way there, but the front landing gear move, like barely moves. Like maybe moves like that. That's it. I guess you can see. I do not know if it's metal gear. Um, it doesn't say anything on it. But here's the EC3 connector, right here. So I have my Spectrum four channel receiver, like I said already, really tucked down in there, right there. And I really had some a whole bunch of confusion on where I should put it sticking there but then I would have all my wires coming from over there and I was just really confused trying to figure out my battery with it but then I was like wait that's a good spot have this all flat velcro right there and I'll just get a battery oh you guys might be able to see the ding um that word ding right there it's weird looks weird it's all right I mean it's not hissing or anything but you just got to be careful all I have to do is put it in there. I make sure this leads on top, not on bottom. This does have like a little bit of presence right there. Now, so I just, this is hard doing with one hand. I try not to damage this area. It's a little bit wrinkled. So, so it's gonna be dark here. And then I just slide it straight back in. It's gonna be at like a 45 degree angle, I'd say, I guess, because there, the receiver is like right there and there's a couple bumps. Like right there, so then it goes back in. So then that would be good for the CG. Now you want these wire, these all stay out of the way of that. So I usually have this balance lead stuck in right there. I would usually probably have it out, maybe off to the side right there if I have a voltage alarm. But I put my timer at three minutes, and, and then I'll check it. Which gave me probably, I would probably be able to fly with for four minutes depending on my throttle use. But then I would have this plugged in, then I would tuck it into there because this canopy also comes down and then it would be perfect. And then the CG would, would be perfect. CG was kind of hard to figure it out because it was acting out weird. But then I, it just, I just went with it and it went perfectly fine. Which, I shouldn't have done. Well, I did. I, was, I did measure it, but um, it was a little bit tail heavy. But it, actually, it wasn't. So overall, I say this is a really good um, EDF, especially if you've been flying for a little while. I've been flying for maybe four years. Uh, yeah, four years. I would say for the first two years I was on and off with a small little tiny plane. Um, but yeah, I've been flying. You, yeah. So. I'd say this is your. This is a great first EDF jet for a guy, for someone who's been flying for a while, or for a couple months, a couple years, and they just want to get into it. It's perfect. It's really low cost. Uh, the plane itself is really low cost, but it cost me eighty dollars just for two batteries, uh, other receiver I bought, which was, um and a charge lead. Um, these. Batteries were bought off of MotionRC.com. They're at Myro. So yeah, MotionRC bought off and off. And this plane itself was $160. Plus another $80, which would be two something, 250 probably. Um, but overall, I say it's great. It does have plenty of speed. I really am, I really wish it had um, retractable landing gear. 
uh, flaps too, but with these small wings, I doubt they would have fit it. But that concludes today's review. Uh, I'm really happy with this plane. Um, there are a few cons, but they don't, they just don't really matter because it, the overall, it's a beautiful plane, really nice paint job, no smears, nothing, a few little wrinkles, but that's all right. So please thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. runway in the front landing gear there's two tiny little screws that were loose made it too wobbly too wobbly yeah very nice handling that was scary really fun but scary as is my this is my first jet and problems all right guys so i want to talk to you guys um real quick I, yeah i already said bye but um so i have my website up again i did have it up for a little while but i decided to take it off <laughs> there's the jet um i don't know why i did have a shop on there i was going to start a shop but i decided not to i'll wait till i gain subscribers for a little while but then i was like well, maybe people want to know more. Maybe people want to contact me, get out to me. So I brought it back up. So I really, if you guys want to go up to my website and subscribe, I do have a blog on there. I'm, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. I'll try doing stuff, but I'm busy with YouTube. Even I'm not posting too much things, but it does get, um, run my schedule a little bit. But if you guys would like to go on my website, it will be linked be below all my videos for now on, and it is in my linked in my about section, and will be shown in my display where it says Division RC. So there's my website. You could scroll all the way down, subscribe to it, so you got so you get notifications. I send emails too to those people who subscribe. So I would really enjoy if you guys would also subscribe too. Once again, please thumbs up subscribe and I'll see you next time.